Thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity to join USEA today. Um, and obviously quite honored to um, be the be the person wrapping up what uh, I sure it has assuredly been um, a very uh, stimulating conversation, especially with the backdrop um, of a new administration and, and new Congress. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit for starters about um, who the American Clean Power Association is. Uh, obviously, we are a new trade association um, that uh, is uniting, seeks to unite the power of the trillion dollar renewable energy industry. And um, the way we're thinking about things is, you know, this is, we need, we, we desperately needed a trade association that could speak um, with one voice about the clean power sector writ large. So our goal is to represent solar, wind, storage, and transmission. Um, it's, I think it's also kind of important to know what the context that American Clean Power um, or ACP, uh, you know, in, in the, the, the sort of journey that they that, that the board went on. Um, over a year of planning went into the design of this new organization. So we have a new board, new structure, new governance, new members, new mission, and now with me, a new CEO. Um, our goal is to build a bigger um, trade association with a larger budget and therefore a larger footprint. And it really comes from this notion that we will be stronger if we can speak with one voice. So as just as the, the energy sector looks far different today than it did 10 years ago, um, it was with that in mind that, you know, we need, a tra uh, we need a new trade association in Washington that represents where the, the clean power industry is today. Um, I know there's been a lot of discussion today about the state of energy from a lot of different <laughs> different vantage points, but um, it's interesting as I have been getting up to speed and and um, talking to our member companies, talking to Capitol Hill, engaging the administration. Um, there's, it, it, you know, it wasn't that long ago, and I remember it was. Um, working on the first State of the Union for then President Obama, and we were trying to figure out what is the clean power target that we could embrace as an, as as a, as the new administration, and how could we think about you know weaving something um, weaving something into uh, Obama's first State of the Union address that would be meaningful. And it was it, it was really hard to think about having double digits for a clean power. Uh, target and you look at where we are today, that was just 10 years ago. It's pretty phenomenal. Um, we've made clean energy as a whole has made extraordinary progress over the last decade due to not only the technology improvements, but also competitive pricing and strong consumer preferences for renewable energy technologies. So we've gone from a situation where it was for a while, a long time <laughs> question of if, but now the question I think is how fast. These are mainstream energy technologies that are providing a significant amount of U.S. electricity, powering tens of millions of homes and providing work for hundreds of thousands of Americans across all 50 states. Of note, responding to strong support from their customers, more and more Fortune 500 companies are also buying clean energy at record pace. Companies like Google, Walmart, GM and AT&T are seeking to meet their own climate goals and lock in fixed price affordable electricity to power their operations. Uh, this momentum is only set to continue. The U.S. Energy Information just this month estimated that clean power will account for over 80% of new utility scale power additions in 2021, including notably a quadrupling of our nation's utility scale battery storage in a single year. Um, looking, looking forward, um, you know, we, we are we are setting our sights on ambitious but achievable uh, future for clean energy industry. Um, we're continuing and, and, and are looking to accelerate rapid growth in order to meet our nation's climate and economic needs. Reaching a majority renewables electric grid by 2030 will deploy over a trillion dollars in capital investment into the American economy while supporting nearly a million direct jobs, stabilizing wholesale prices, and reducing U.S. carbon emissions by over 
This transition to a clean energy economy must and will come with a strong and renewed focus on American workers. We saw some of that yesterday in the words from John Kerry and Dina McCarthy, including those from other energy technologies who may be transitioning to employment in emerging fields like offshore wind. The focus on the American worker must also come with an improved response around not just labor unions, but the role that diversity and inclusion plays in the clean energy workforce, as well as the way we ensure that disadvantaged communities receive the benefits of this energy transition. Um, I've had this conversation with my board members and, you know, frankly, I think this is an area where we as an industry need and must do better. Um, finally, I think as, as, as I think about our, as our, our strategy, it's, not only important how we think about our, our near-term opportunities, but we also need to play for the long game. And in order to do that, I think bipartisanship needs to be at the center of this effort. Uh, this too, I see is an area where um, we, we, we need to do better and we need to do more to build a deeper bench of Republican support for uh, a pro-climate agenda, which is also a pro-jobs agenda. Sorry about that. Um, in terms of what is our trade association going to going to focus on writ large, um, I think it's safe to say a lot of uh, a lot of the issues that I um, that you see on this slide today are not going to be a major surprise. At the same time, because ACP is an organization that is um, less than a month old, I am very I, I'm, as a as a new head of a trade association, I have learned and listened to uh, other colleagues in this space. And the number one lesson I have learned is you never wanna get in front of your board. Um, and we actually have our first board meeting tomorrow uh, to approve our policy um, and, and uh, long-term uh, policy and, uh, agenda. Um, so I don't, uh, you know, I, I, I do, certainly don't wanna get in front of the board, but I think our, our um, you know, our, our, our North Star principle is that we want to unite America's renewable energy industry to advance our shared goals and to transform the U.S. power grid to a low cost, reliable and renewable power system. In order to do that, transmission improvement and expansion is going to be critical to meeting that climate goal. We've also got to remove barriers to expansion that will make hitting those goals possible and affordable and will deliver clean, reliable power that consumers uh, want at lowest cost. Um, we also need to remove barriers to the siting of clean energy projects and make sure permitting timelines allow us to hit our decarbonization goals while still being good stewards of our communities. Uh, to keep U.S. clean power cost competitive, we must address U.S. trade policy, addressing tariffs on clean energy technology. And, you know, finally, growth in U.S. clean energy will mean the creation of hundreds of thousands of new direct jobs. We're focused on fulfilling the need for a diverse and qualified workforce reflecting the makeup of our nation and our communities. We will need and do need tax policy uh, to help meet the demand for clean power and one that allows for efficient use of existing tax incentives and creates a level playing field for energy policy going forward. Um, just because I <laughs> spent so much time in the Obama White House and, uh, and, and was an adv informal advisor to the Biden campaign, I've also spent a lot of time uh, looking at and and sort of digesting the the new Biden administration priorities, and um, I think have a, a few observations that I'd love to share uh, based on early days. Um, first, when I <laughs> Biden as a person, I, I mean the bulk of the conversations that I have that I had with him when working in the White House were specifically around the support um, for communities, and he very much um, well embraces the need for an energy transition, but also recognizes that that um, that that we need to bring our communities along that worker retraining, um, you know, that 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 those are core elements as we're as we think about the, the worker transition. Um, I think the, the second thing is because of the work he did um, with the American Recovery Act. He saw firsthand because he was over, you know, his job was to to um, 
to oversee the implementation of the Re Recovery Act, he saw what change we could make in the power sector with some very targeted funding. And I think as you look at his policy proposals, he very much carries those lessons forward with him. Um, and the last thing is just the way that he thinks about climate is also, it goes hand in hand with jobs creation. And in his mind, those are two sides of the same coin. I think that was reflected very much when he was on the campaign trail. Uh, and I expect that as they are, you know, working on infrastructure, the February infrastructure package is there, um, uh, you know, messaging and, and um, talking about these new commitments. I very much think that the, the jobs angle is, is going to dom and economic recovery angle will dominate a lot of the messaging. Um, the second thing I think has been really interesting is just the, the, the transition itself. Um, having served on the Obama, uh, the uh, Obama transition in 2008, it was, you know, we were very much focused on what do we need to do to recur regrow the economy? We were dealing with um, sort of figuring out the, the parameters of the Recovery Act. This admin this transition was very focused from early days on how do we bring in climate experts to think differently about unique approaches across government uh, across government. So what is how how could Treasury think differently about its role in um, in in addressing the climate crisis? Is there you know are there new opportunities and levers within USTR as we think about our trade policies? And how they relate to climate change. Um, so, a lot of uh, what 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 incoming new administration officials received on day one is a very comprehensive um, uh, set of ideas on an agency by agency basis that could you know be deployed against a broader, more holistic um, government wide approach to addressing. Um, Climate change, which again I, I think is pretty exciting. Um, the third piece of it is that is the team. We've never seen um, such a large and robust team of individuals across the federal government dedicated to the climate crisis. And um, you know, obviously, leadership starts at the top. The fact that Biden has put everybody on alert that this is a day one priority, and that he wants to um, make sure that. We are moving the needle on a day to day basis that it, there's no substitute for that. But the fact that in addition to that, you have such a, a large team, not only thinking about the domestic agenda with Gina McCarthy and Ali Zaidi, um, you've also got the international piece with um, with former Secretary Kerry um, and is, I'm, I would say, having worked with him for a number of years. I don't think that you could find anybody better to represent us in the global stage than um, than John Kerry. And I think, you know, so you've got this incredible team in place. And on top of that, you've got a lot of different cabinet officials that have been vetted with looking through a climate lens. You've got, you know, Janet Yellen talking about creating a climate team within the Treasury Department. You've got, you know, new um, uh, climate expertise at Commerce and, and, and the Department of Transportation. So in all, I, I think it's pretty, it's a pretty strong indicator that um, you know, not only does the president take this challenge seriously and is putting action in place, he's building out the team to make sure that um, that that there are, you know, that that his his thoughts and his thoughts become actions. Um, the fourth point is is um, it is interesting to me to see how much uh, the the president has already focused on going big with existing authorities. Um, even in fact, yesterday, and so in week one, there was this announcement to create a task force that will look at the whole of government approach, everything from federal procurement to targeting federal lands and water for clean energy development. Our industry couldn't be more excited about this potential, um, but it's it's in it's they're not wasting any time um and i mean just as a comparison it wasn't until the second year of the second term that president obama 
um, you know, put a similar approach to getting a whole of government approach and climate action plan in place. Um, and you're, you know, the fact that they're starting literally in week one uh, is, again, I think another strong indicator that they are going to engage Congress, but they're also going to think creatively about what they can do with their existing authorities. And um, I guess finally, I would say the um, the, the politics and all of this are, are sort of fascinating. We're, um, you know, we're it, 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 as having spent way too much time in Washington, D.C., the number one lesson I've learned is that in order to get big, big things done, it takes a big coalition of the willing. And as we look today, and you've got not only my member companies and the representatives that we have, whether that's a utility or a wind blade manufacturer or an end user buying the clean power, we also now have tech. Um, which is playing an ever increasing role in uh, in the demand for clean power. But it's really interesting to see where autos are showing up in this conversation and the fact that GM just today announced that they will phase out gas powered cars and trucks and be 100% zero emission vehicles by 2035. You know, it, it's, it's an it underscores what an exciting time it is, but how much things have changed. Um, and I, you know, I, I, I think that it also is a strong indicator that we are going to have a different, the ability to build different kinds of coalitions around the climate agenda than we've seen previously. And obviously is very exciting uh, for me. Um, so in summary, I would just say uh, what many panelists have said, which is that the world is at a critical moment in the fight against climate change. Truly, this is the decade that we'll see the clean energy transition move forward as we work to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and achieve a more sustainable future. But we also know that greenhouse gas emissions are not falling fast enough to avert the worst effects of climate change. And this immense challenge has been compounded by the global pandemic and the burden that COVID-19 places on public health and the economy. But amid all of these challenges, there is also immense opportunity for our country to achieve the interlinked goals of first being economic growth and second combating climate change. That's what, what myself and our member companies will be focused on in the weeks and months ahead. Uh, and we look forward to working with other members of USBA and building those broader coalitions to get big things done. Thank you.